so if this is something that you do not already know how to do and that you've done multiple times and that you kind of grasp, um, you really do need to pay attention to this and I'll tell you why. This is the difference between having a store that actually makes profit and having a store which doesn't make profit. Um, it's very, very easy to you know, find products, add them into a store, set up the stores, make it look nice. Once you've done it once, um, you can pretty much just repeat it over and over and over again and just do store after store after store. The problem is if no one ever comes to the store and if no one ever comes to the store with the intent to purchase, um, no one will. So in this video, I want to just give you a broad, basic understanding of kind of Facebook ads, how it works, and then most importantly, I'm going to show you how to set up your columns, which is the last bit of setup that you need to do before you can actually start running campaigns. Um, so guys, please watch this video a few times if you've never ever done anything with Facebook ads. Um, it is very important. Try and get your head around what certain terms mean. Uh, in marketing, there's certain terms, CPM, CTRs, CBCs. Um, just write them down somewhere, generally papers better. And yeah, uh, let's dive into it. All right, guys, so this is the Facebook Ads Ads Manager. This is probably one of the most important um, places within Facebook Business Manager as a whole because this is where you're going to manage your campaigns. Um, and just so you get the, the kind of terminology, a, a campaign is essentially um, an advert. So if you think about this, in Facebook terms, there's three layers for every advert. So there's a campaign, okay, which is like, if you think of as a big box, that would be your big box, that's your group. Underneath that, there's ad sets, and then under each ad set, there is ad copy, okay? All right, so to explain a little bit more about it, um, campaigns would be, let's say a brand wants to do a winter campaign. All right, now if you think about it, there's going to be multiple different items within winter. There's going to be multiple different variants in terms of discounts that they want to give, different audiences that they want to show. Audience is really, really important to understand. An audience is essentially a group of people who express an interest in something. So for example, um, Manchester United, uh, that will be an audience on you. So everyone who has expressed interest on Facebook, on Instagram, and on their third parties, who likes um, Manchester United or has anything to do with it, will come up as the Manchester United audience. Uh, it's the same thing with women's fashion, with women's high-end, uh, expensive jackets, boots, doesn't matter, that's an audience, okay? So a campaign, essentially you set the, the name of the campaign as a whole and the objective, okay? Now, tomorrow I'm going to show you how to set up a campaign from A to Z, um, so I'm not going to do that now, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a rundown on the terminology. Um, so, when you get into Facebook, you'll see this thing at the top here with the three lines. That is essentially your menu bar. So if you click this, you're gonna get a really big menu with a ton of stuff. And this is where people get a little bit confused because you can click on each one of these things and then there's more menus and there's a whole lot of stuff going on. Um, and that's where it becomes a little bit complicated. Okay, so I'm kind of gonna give you a rundown on the most important ones. So audience insights is very important. I'm gonna open it in a new tab, so we'll go there. Uh, creative Hub, not really important. Uh, business Manager, no. Ads Manager, in my opinion, by far the most important. Page Posts, really, really important. Um, but that will be in tomorrow's video. App Dashboard, if you're running campaigns and stuff for apps, uh, like I do for some of my clients and stuff, then that becomes very important. But for what we're talking about, you can disregard it. The same thing with uh, these two. Ads reporting, um, generally I would say you're going to do a lot of your ad analysis and reporting here um, with under these different columns which we'll get into just now. Um, but essentially, yeah, you don't need to worry about that. Uh, test and learn, same thing, um, attribution and analytics. Again, they're really, really great. Once you have enough data, you can really start diving into these and get an in-depth look of what's happening. Um, but for the purpose of just getting a few Facebook campaigns up and running and profitable, you don't need to stress about it. Um, yeah, pixels, 
very important. Uh, that was in the previous video, we've already spoken about that. Offline events, you don't need to worry about. App events, you don't need to worry about. Custom conversions, if you have a general store. Um, so there's two types of stores you could set up. There's a niche store, um, which only sells one of the same type of product. So for example, um, let's see, a, a, a general store would be Amazon, they sell everything, okay? A niche store would be something like just a woman's clothing store, just sells women's clothing, or just a cat store, just sells cat stuff, um, or just a baby store, just sells baby stuff. If you have a general store, custom conversions is really useful because remember everything is about data, but you need that data to be clean. You can't have a list of people, right, but the one person is into cat stuff and the other person is into baby stuff. They need to all have the same interest. So the only way to split those lists is with custom conversions. Um, and let me know if you want me to do a full video on that because that is very in-depth and very specialized. Um, audiences, when you get into your stage of scaling and doing custom audiences and lookalikes, that becomes very important. Uh, images, um, generally they'll just use page posts to do that. Catalogs, uh, that's really important again for retargeting. You set that up with Shopify. Uh, business locations, not really, uh, neither of these. And then obviously you have your settings. Um, so if I start over here from audience insights, okay. First thing here, this will always pop up. You just want to choose everyone on Facebook. So, what is audience insights? This essentially allows you to take a view of all the data that Facebook has um, across Facebook, across Instagram, pretty much everything that they have collected and try and find who you want to show ads to. Because the main trick with Facebook is not showing ads, it's showing ads to the right amount of people because they charge you to show ads to a thousand people. Okay. Now, just in the United States alone, they have 250 million active people. Okay, so if you divide that and then multiply it by the charge per thousand, you're going to get an astronomical figure. So it's not feasible to show your ad to every single person. So the whole art and the whole trick of what we're doing here is to show your ads to the right people, um, not just everyone. So essentially, you want to get this number down to what I would recommend if you're just doing your first campaigns. Um, you want to get it down to about just under a million. So anywhere from 200 to 450, 600,000 uh, would be really, really good starting point. And then from there you can specialize, but it does need to be what's called a scale audience. So again, I know there's tons of terminology, but a scale audience has the ability to scale. So you never ever want to have an audience of, for example, 20,000 people, because let's say it's $5 to show your ad to a thousand people. Okay, so five times 20 is $100. So for $100, you will show your ad to every single person in that audience. That's a very big problem because you're gonna run out of people, right? You have to work on percentages, which is why I said that there is a lot of maths in this, um, but it's not, it's not like the maths they teach in school where it's like Pythagoras and stuff. It's just basic money in versus money out. Generally, you wanna be very conservative and say about, six to ten percent of the people will click on your ad and then one to three percent of those people will buy all right so six to ten percent of twenty thousand people is not enough to sustain a product scaling into multiple six figures and even seven figures you need audiences of at least a couple million plus to be able to show your ad to every single person um, so to get more into it I know there's a lot of explaining, but it's not very difficult. You essentially, you can choose your country. So for example, you can add um, United Kingdom in here if you want. Uh, your age and gender. This again has all got research. So if you are selling something which appeals to an old generation, obviously you want to change that. That depends on your product. Um, but you can pretty much set this to whatever you want and you'll see it will reload all your audiences. And then it also says, um, that within these two countries with this age range um, you can see that there is a massive outburst of women here generally when you're looking at this as a data point you want to look for where the blue goes past the gray um, because that means that generally your cost to show to a thousand people will be a bit less um, all right so gender again if you're selling a men or a woman only product that will come in here Interests, this has to do with um, the audiences that we spoke about. Now, 
in targeting, I will get into that tomorrow's video because in tomorrow's video, we're pretty much going to be making a campaign. Um, but for example, you could do something like uh, we were speaking about Manchester United. You'll see that will come up. Um, and then if you go to location, I guarantee the majority of them will be in. Yeah, you can see they're all in the United Kingdom because we chose the United States and the United Kingdom. But it makes sense for the majority of them, at least in your top cities, to be in the UK. Um, so you can see how that works. Now, between these two countries, there's only 2.5 million people interested in um, Manchester United. And you can see that the majority of them are kind of from 18 to 34 years old. Um, and su surprisingly, there seems to be a very large amount of women, which is pretty interesting. Um, some of this stuff I wouldn't take too, um, take too much into mind because a lot of it, like education level, um, it's very, very hard to fake hard for Facebook to be very, very accurate with this. So generally it's just a good guideline. I mean, a lot of it doesn't really make much of a difference. The main thing that you wanna be looking at is their page likes, okay? So for example, let's say we were selling a football or soccer ball um, that had Manchester United on it. You wanna know who to show that product to. Yes, you wanna show it to Manchester United fans, but now you have this massive audience, which in the beginning, is going to be really really expensive and really difficult to kind of narrow down if you're showing it to millions of people so you want to get a little bit more in depth so for example adidas soccer okay is one of them so you could type in here see if it finds it yeah adidas soccer so if you go to adidas soccer and you take manchester united away you now have an audience of 250 okay that's fairly small um, but you get the gist of how this works and from here you can see like Nike football So if you add Nike football on to here um, Nike football when they combine they're now an audience of 1.5 million Roughly, okay now we saw from our earlier thing that the majority of it was in the United Kingdom So if I take the United States away, I'm now at an audience of 350,000 people that is a very very good audience size to go for if you're just getting started um, and you just want to test the product because it's big enough that there's lots of people but it's not big enough that your ad is not going to go anywhere okay um, so that's a very broad understanding and then it also goes on here with the page likes um, here's the affinity score uh, which becomes very very relevant obviously you want to look for here there cannot be a big drop so here at 715 is the top one so pretty much I would say anything below 680 disregard um, because you don't want to go more than 50, 60 times lower than that. As soon as you're doing, you know, 200 times or so, there's no point. So I would literally just look at your, kind of your top four, top, top five, uh, more or less, and gauge the audiences there. Okay. Now, most important, as you said, was the ads manager. Um, so for the kind of summary of today's video, what I want to set up with you is going to be these columns. All right. So when you start running your ads, the campaigns will be here and pretty much here there will just be numbers. So amount spent, uh, cost per result, impressions, which is how many people saw your ad. Um, and at any point when you're doing this yourself, if you see a term that you don't understand, uh, you can just hover over it and Facebook does a really, really good job of uh, explaining oh, someone sending messages um, of kind of explaining what things are um, but it's very important that you have the right things here so you can go over here to columns and Facebook gives you a few basic breakdowns uh, so like engagement you'll see it will change to now show more engagement post reactions comments shares um, targeting and creative it changes here in my opinion I wouldn't choose any of these I think Facebook has done a very very good job of putting them in the most advantageous position so you must remember Facebook is a business they make money by people spending a lot of money on ads okay that's how they make money so they are going to set this up in a way that makes you spend more money so that they get more money so you can kind of see that you know they, they tend to put amount spent kind of at the end um, and a lot of times it's off the page more leading that way 
um, to like forget about it and focus on like results and stuff. Um, so you need to be really, really sharp there. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to customize my columns and then save it. Um, I'd recommend you doing the exact same thing. Um, so I'm just going to clear all of this. Um, the first one that I like having in front is delivery. Okay, so again, if you have a robot or a tip, it will tell you what it is. Essentially, this will just tell you if the campaign is running. So is it active? Is it, um, has it not been approved by Facebook? Is it in review? Is it in draft? Um, essentially, so you can just see which ones are running, which ones are not running. Um, so that's a really, really good one. Um, then a really one that I like to have in the front is CPM. Now, CPM, like I said, Facebook charges you to show an ad to a thousand people, okay? So it's not a cost per one person, it's a cost per thousand. Generally, you want to make sure that your CPM is as low as possible. The lower your CPM, the better, as long as you're still getting clicks and it's still high quality. Um, so for example, if you show ads just in India, your CPM is really, really low, but it's because the majority of the audience um, doesn't have the money to buy anything, so advertisers are not competing there. So you need to find that balance, um, but it's a really, really good statistic, I think, to look at, okay? Um, so let me just go through all of them. Um, the other thing that I like is impressions. Uh, so impressions will tell you how many people have seen your ad, um, and then from that, I like CTR. Okay, so now, if you think, when you're looking at all your data, I tend to think of it as a bit of a story. So you've got the campaign name, is it working? How much am I being charged for a thousand people? Then how many people have I uh, showed the ad to? And then your CTR. Now CTR is your click through rate. Um, I think it will also give you a description, yep. So a CTR shows you what percentage of the people you show the ad click on it. Okay, so if for easy numbers, let's say you show your ad to 100 people and 10% is your CTR. That means out of the 100 people that saw the ad, 10 people clicked on it. Okay, pretty simple. So I like CTR. Um, cost is fine. Engagement, um, I would tend to change this. So we're gonna get into this in a later stage, but when you start scaling, so once something is working, you wanna start breaking things down by percentage viewed. So if you have a video, you wanna do 10% people who have viewed it, 3% and 5%, build a custom audience, then build a look like, and then scale up into that. Um, so at the moment, for just what we're doing, um, and in the initial stages, I wouldn't really put that there, because remember, here, you don't want tons and tons of data. If there's millions of numbers in front of you, it's very, very easy to get very confused um, and you are not be able to absorb it and just get all over the place. Um, so these ones for now I'm going to leave. Messaging doesn't matter. Uh, media, here's more about that. Um, clicks, okay. So here is again, um, I wonder why there is two. Right, let's use this one. I think this one is the actual proper one. Let me just see. Yeah, um, Facebook has been adding multiple ones for some reason. Um, but anyway, so CTR is the same thing. Um, now, link clicks, um, I like to see just the number of people that have clicked on the ad. Um, for me, you can put unique clicks, that's fine. For me, it, I don't think it might, makes much difference because generally I would run a retargeting ad set in a different campaign, so it doesn't cross over set. Um, but there is a small difference, so you can do that if you want. Um, here, very, very important, cost per click, um, and I suppose you could do unique click as well, but again, just to limit the amount of data. Essentially, that is now showing you how much it costs for one person to click on the ad, um, and that could be three cents, five cents, one dollar, twenty dollars, depends on what you're doing. Um, then here you go. Here is all of the data um, that makes a difference on what we're talking about, okay? Um, so, ads to cart is very important, but you want, let me just see, they have put everything all over the place. All right, so let me just go through the ones that you want. Um, you do not want, uh, on Facebook, you don't want offline website ads to cart, that's fine. Um, so you want the ad to cart, you want the checkout initiated, 
Um, now, I know you guys are gonna ask why am I unchecking this? It's because things duplicate if you don't. So for some reason, add to carts and website add to carts are the same thing. But if you don't unclick this, you end up getting two columns with the exact same number in and it just takes up space. I don't know why Facebook's done that. It's only fairly recently. Um, but yeah, so you want ads to cart, checkouts initiated, content viewed, um, and content viewed you actually want to put first. Um, so we'll do content viewed there. Uh, content views, add to cart, checkout initiated. Um, I think that I had missed something I have. Okay. Um, Alright, so before I go any further, let me just do that. It's the amount spent. Okay, so I like having the amount spent right at the top um, next to CPM. So the amount spent is the total amount of money you have paid up till now uh, for the ad. So amount spent, I like having it next to the CPM so I can see where funds are being allocated. So just add that to the top. Um, where were we? Checkouts initiated. Um, Content views, checkouts initiated, custom events. Again, if you're doing an app or if you're doing some form of advert that is trying to collect leads and stuff, then obviously you want to change what you add in here. Um, and then obviously one of the most important ones is your purchases. Um, same thing. And then you just want your purchase ROAS. Okay, now your purchase ROAS, return on ad spend. Um, it's also your ROI or return on investment. So for example, um, let's do basic numbers. Let's say uh, your product that you're selling is ten dollars, um, and you have spent five dollars to get one person to buy. Your your ROAS or your return on spend, return on investment, will be two times. So five times two is ten. You've spent five dollars getting the person. They paid you ten dollars to buy the product. All right. Um, so generally, you, if it ever goes below kind of zero, that's when you know that you are. Uh, not profitable um, if it's I mean below one so if it's like 0 0.3 0 0.4 you are not breaking even so a one times return on investment will be a break even meaning you're not making money um, but you're not losing money but again with this you have to take into account your product cost um, so Facebook is looking at just how much you spent on advertising versus how much they paid um, but the other thing that comes into that is the product cost which you have to pay to Aliexpress um, so it's not a exact um, figure on your true return on investment, but it is a good allocation in terms of your ad spend, if that makes sense. Um, but in the beginning, guys, you are not going to be profitable. Unless you hit a very, very winning product, when you first getting started, your ROAS will not be above one, maybe two. Um, it takes a bit of optimization. Uh, you're going to end up changing audiences. You're going to end up doing a ton of stuff and then eventually becoming profitable. Um, so I wouldn't really look at this figure in the beginning if you're just getting started. Um, but it is, a, it is an important one to put there. Um, I don't know why that's there. Okay. Um, these things you don't need. Um, objective, I tend to put it in the name so you don't need that. These things you don't need. Tracking, none of those things. Optimization, you don't need any of those. Okay, so once that's set up, I'm just going to go here, save preset, um, and you can just save it as whatever you want. Um, I'll just do copy custom, and then just press apply, um, and you'll see that Facebook has now gone and rearranged the, um, the columns into the way that you set it out. Um, so to just go over it again, remember, like I said, think of it as a story. So you're going to see your campaign. Is it working or is it not working? Okay, is it showing, is it not? How much have I spent on the whole campaign? What is my CPM? So how much am I paying to show that ad to a thousand people on average? How many people have I showed it to? Uh, how many, what percentage of those people have clicked on it? How many people does that actually mean have clicked on it? How much has it cost me for the average person to click on it? Once they've clicked on it and it's taken them to the website, how many of them have viewed the content? Now the difference between cost per click and content views here, a lot of people are going to ask, it's because when you click on something or you swipe on something in Facebook, it has to load. There actually is a very big drop off, so especially in Instagram stories, it takes a while to load. 
Um, so a lot of people tend to close the, the browser down or exit in between that. Um, so I like to have that there so I can see the difference. Of the people that viewed the website, how many added the item to cart? How many people initiated checkout? So they went to checkout, they added their cart information and stuff but just didn't purchase. Um, and then how many people actually purchased it? And then what return on ad spend am I getting? Um, now you can go ahead and move these things around. So uh, generally your amount spent doesn't need to be so big. You can make that a bit smaller. Same thing with delivery. Um, impressions, if you have a really big monitor, um, it's really nice if you can get everything to fit on one page. Uh, so you don't have to do a lot of scrolling. So at this point, um, everything is on one page, the way I've structured it. So I don't have to scroll and I can just get a snapshot of everything that is going on. Um, so yeah guys, pretty much go and from yesterday's video you should already have uh, your Facebook business manager set up. Um, pretty much go ahead and do this now and then you're ready to start running your first campaign which is what we will do in the next video. So comment down below or tons of you have been sending me Instagram messages um, or send me a message on Instagram also works. Uh, if you have any questions about what certain things mean, um, why you should add certain things and not others, um, let me know and if I've missed anything as well, uh, also let me know and I will end up editing the video somewhere. Um, I'm looking at it pretty much looks like I have got everything covered though um, or at least the important information. There's obviously tons of other stuff but the important stuff. Um, so yeah guys, thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next one.